Good morning and welcome to this week's episode of In Real Life. Today we have the absolute honour of being joined by the lovely Sasha. Sasha is an emergency care practitioner and it is so wonderful to have you on the show. How are you, Sasha? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm, uh, yeah, I, I'm generally doing good as we say, sort of navigating our current circumstances. But uh, yeah, no, in general, good. Good. That's really good to hear. Navigating, that's a key word people are using these days, especially if they're key workers like you are. What does that look like right now for you in terms of your work life? How are you navigating? this situation Uh, yeah I would describe it as um nothing has changed but everything has changed in other words I work in a minor injury unit so I am not directly dealing with patients that have tested positive for COVID and are receiving intensive treatment or on wards Um, I work in a minor injury unit people are still coming to us with uh, cuts, bruises, bumps, broken bones, uh, minor illness, you, the, the sort of stuff we would normally deal with. Uh, in drastically reduced numbers, it has to be said. Um, but now if you were to come to me with a, with a broken bone, um, I would be looking at you through a visor and a, and a, a surgical mask. Wow. Yeah. So what everything looks like is pretty much the same apart from having to take the precautionary measures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in terms of the team that you work with and in terms of um, all hands on deck, does it all look the same in that area? Yeah, we've got a couple of additions to our team. Uh, so we have a physiotherapist now working with us and someone from the uh, immunisation and vac- uh, vaccination nurse. So they've been redeployed, uh, which is a massive change for them. Uh, because they've come from what they're familiar with into a, a completely different uh, department. Uh, but we have a great team. We're lovely. We're just lovely. And, uh, and You're so- lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. I mean, working, well, knowing you is, it's just the whole experience. You're a whole vibe, Sasha. I'm sure everyone, the new people and your, your, your current team, your usual team, sorry, all benefit from having you on that team. But one thing that's so lovely about what you said, which I'm starting to hear all over the place, is that during these unprecedented times, people are just pulling together. So you've got workforces collaborating in order to get stuff done and really help in any way that they can. And then just in general, in terms of the community, even having social distance, we're doing things virtually to come together and and help the nation and the globe just move forward. Yeah, I think it really does show. I think for the National Health Service at at her best, I think people have commented that the National Health Service is is, is people seem to regard it in a sense of a sort of her when they say the National Health Service her. at its best. <laughs> um, and and really, that's because it's made up of people who are dedicated to ultimately when you go into something like the NHS you're there because you want to care for people you want people to be well you have a you know that that thing about you that that uh, that drives you in that way uh, and yeah so we've we were adapting and we're changing rapidly and and actually some of the changes that have come about no doubt will actually result in in great advances in medicine um, and also how we, we relate to people and how people can relate to the health service. So, yeah, there's lots of stuff going on. It's good. When you're talking, all I can hear bubbling up and all I can feel inside is a sense of hope in the midst of this really challenging situation. There's this real strong sense of hope. What is driving that hope for you? And what does that look like on a day to day in the environment that you work in? Um, I think it's certainly not denying the, the, the facts of what's going on. Um, you know, my colleagues um, and myself, we've, we, um, we talk about the current situation. Um, but one of the things that I try and do is if the current situation starts to predominate or dominate the conversation, 
then I start to look at, well, what can I do? And what can I say to actually bring hope into what is being said, what's being broadcast? You know, we talk about our words carrying power. They bring life. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's having a situation where we can talk, but recognising when it's starting to, to actually affect the atmosphere in a way that is not helpful and subtly um, just trying to bring conversations around. And also in that as well, guarding your own heart understanding mm. that um because everything that we do is proverbs talks about everything that we do comes from that mm. and, and knowing when to walk away as well um but uh, that's really practical it sounds like there's a few elements to that process that you've sort of cultivated practiced and just also naturally kind of do and um, one thing that really sticks out to me is something that i just know of you as a person which is you discern so just now you were, you were basically talking about discerning the atmosphere and w- what impact the words being said, the words that are being broadcasted, heavily broadcasted, have on the atmosphere. But what I also love is that you're so real. So there was that acknowledgement of just being real. The fact is this is happening, but also how can I bring in this, this, this hope that will change the atmosphere yeah tell us more about that i i can tell you from a personal perspective if if you like um, yes please how i've kind of then related to my manager actually in that sense so um i have a, a diagnosis of ms multiple sclerosis um i am well um i'm symptom free and I'm on medication. And so, you know, the usual thing for me is, well, is it the medication? Is it prayer? Yes, it's both. Yes. Uh, there's so an good. internal reality and understanding of what it is that Jesus has done with regards to healing. Um, and so you live in that, in that, that, that world. If you want, I don't even know if you want to call it tension, to be honest with you, because I'm well and uh, I know where I sit on that. Uh-huh. Um, and then with, with working frontline or front patient facing, um, then the government, uh, so the government and the Public Health England started to issue guidance around um, pot- potentially people have conditions where you could be a little bit more vulnerable to uh, to contracting the COVID virus. And so work then put in place uh, risk assessments. And so my manager had to do a risk assessment for me and uh, everything changed and that moment and then two days later something else changed two days later something else changed I spent a week of being told I can come to work I can't come to work can can't can can't and I decided I made a choice that uh, I I said to him I said that hey look I I will honor what it is that you're asking me to do I understand this is a rapidly changing situation um, and it's necessary um, for you to do what you're doing. But because my colleagues, my boss, know about my relationship with Jesus, we've had conversations, I've prayed for some of my colleagues, um, there's a reality there that I was able to, to introduce, which was, hey, you know, I understand what you're asking me to do and I'll do it, but hey, I also have this expectation that it's possible for me to, to be at work and not to be affected by this. Um, because of this reality that I have with regards to who is in me and my relationship with God and, and his His goodness and his purposes and his heart towards us. So, yeah, trying to balance that and also asking a really important question in the midst of it. How are you doing to my boss? Recognising that she's a mum, she's homeschooling and all of this stuff and she's wanting to look after her, um, the, those that, that she works alongside. So, yeah. That is amazing. What an incredible example of how you can respect the the responsibility that we all have to take care of one another, especially those who are in authority over us within workplaces like yours, but also demonstrate integrity in terms of your identity in Christ and really use this as an opportunity again to outline what you what you called your expectation. I love that because it's not an expectation which imposes anything on anyone else as well. It's just one that raises that level of hope because, again, you said they know about your relationship with God anyway. Mm -hmm. From previous experiences, you live your relationship with Jesus day in, day out. And it's no different when this kind of situation arises. Oh, 
wonderful. <laughs> Love that. And then asking how she is or he or she, it was a she, yeah. your boss. Yeah. So how did she respond to that being asked how she was? Sometimes we undermine how, how powerful that is in the midst of this. It was a powerful moment, actually. Um, she stopped and um, became quite clearly emotional. Um, at, and she said, thank you so much for asking. You know, and then actually out of that um, further conversation, actually, I think a couple of days later, uh, I said, hey, look, can I, can I pray for you? Uh, and she was happy for me to pray for her. And just releasing the reality of a blessing of peace on her and her household um, and talking about hope. But, yeah, um, you know, people having to make decisions in circumstances that they would never have foreseen having to and Absolutely. having information that changes day by day. Just having it, taking a moment to think about what that could be like um, for that person. Uh, you may not like some of the things that are being said um but actually yeah so it's uh she she um she's very 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 kind very caring and she just needed to know that she needed to maybe look out for herself as well so that was good oh that's so beautiful I think sometimes we have so much to offer in terms of um our knowledge of the love of God but then it's one thing knowing it and speaking about it and it's another thing taking a moment to think about what it's like to be in someone's shoes so we can actually demonstrate that love and not just speak talking love but love on legs as one of my friends likes to call it I think as a as a leader during this time there must be a lot of pressure so just want to say well done for taking that time to just pause and say how are you to her I think that's definitely one of the most powerful things I've heard um, so far during this um, quarantine time. Hmm. So your relationship with Christ at the moment, your internal reality, there was hope before COVID-19 and there's hope now. God is a person. God is alive and kicking and you spend your day to day with him. Hmm. There's got to be some kind of change in what that feels like or how does that hope feel now during this time um the internal reality doesn't change I mean he said I will never leave you or forsake you it's kind of like it's the 24 7 um relationship in terms of your spirit and his spirit how aware are we of that is the question mm -hmm. and so we can be going along with our, our daily life. We've got a routine where we, we maybe interact with God in a particular way. And then all of a sudden we're, we're going, we've got promises, we've got um, hopes and dreams and prophetic words. And all of a sudden it's like, and I can hear it in my ears now. It's like this cartoon screeching of brakes. of like, ah! oh, oh, we're not bimbling along quite as we thought we were now. Something has come up, which completely radically changes every aspect of our lives at yeah. this time but actually the underlying hope remains mm. because the hope isn't contingent on a circumstance so good see if, if a circumstance can change your hope then it probably wasn't if you like a biblical hope in the first place because hope is actually a person Hope is him. It's his his oh, it's it's his character. It's who he is, and so that sort of hope has its firm foundation in in him. And and Hebrews, I've been reading through Hebrews, um, mm. Hebrews six particularly, it talks about um, hope being the anchor for the soul. So actually, I think what we are talking about a lot of the time is our soul which is our mind our emotions uh, the way that we're interacting now our spirit should lead our soul when something happens all of a sudden it's like oh, what do I want to do I feel angry I feel sad I feel all of these things that's the soul and we if we just stop I, this is the way I've kind of had to do it. I mean I was walking around Morrison's the other week at the NHS shopping hour and mm. I was weeping I started weeping as I walked past the vegetables. It was nothing to do with the vegetables. <laughs> I had to acknowledge that there's something going on in my soul. Yeah. I had to speak to my soul. 
which is has its firm foundation, its anchor, it's anchored in hope. And the hope is the hope that's gone beyond the veil. It's Christ and it's that heavenly reality. It's the heavenly wow. That's where we are. So I think it isn't until we face something, the reality of the foundations of what it is we think we have are exposed. And then God can get into those areas and go, you know, that thing that you thought you believed, you might want to maybe just talk to me about it a bit. So, yeah. Oh, I love <laughs> that. Just talk to me. Like, I am hope. Let's talk about this. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, how far can I carry you in this situation? Yeah. One thing I love that you said was the hope. It goes beyond what we see right now. Even our hope for COVID-19 to pass and to pass quickly. God, yeah, that's going to happen. But also our hope is heavenly. Yeah. I literally got tingles when you said that because it's that reminder of Hebrews, isn't it? Like some people, um, the fulfillment of God's hope, you know, it goes so beyond the circumstances that we experience that we cannot rely on the manifestations of circumstances to s- sustain our hope. Mm. Let's talk about that positivity versus this real anchor of hope. Yeah. You said that, you know, this is a testing time where God mm. is allowing us to see whether what we felt we had internally is actually what God offers um you know we are seeing the whole world turn to hope right now and often it manifests in some beautiful posts on Instagram about positivity it manifests in acts of kindness and stuff like that to anyone who's watching right now who has the best intentions and who is daily trying to practice in these heavy atmospheres being positive what would you say, knowing hope himself, knowing the king of the universe who is hope and who is love? What would you say to that person who's trying to be positive but still feeling that heaviness? Um, that, that, the, there was a, the scripture talking about always being able to give an answer for the hope that you have. Mm. Um, and I think Abraham, in, in Hebrews, in, that, in chapter 6, it said that Abraham um, waited patiently. Uh, for the promise. Um, The reason that that we can have hope is because of the one who promised is faithful. Mm. So he, he, when Abraham had this moment with God, when he was making this covenant, this with, with Abraham that affects all of us, which ultimately culminated in, it is Christ. And it's it's ultimately culminated in in Jesus and what he did. Um, He, uh, God kind of said to him, look, I'm going to give you a couple of things to look out for, because basically my promise to you is that your descendants will be as numerous as the dust and the stars in the Mm -hmm. sky. Very, very practical, because Abraham would be farming and the dust would kick up and it'd be in his clothes. And then at night he would look up at the stars. So doing good things, doing kind things is actually a reflection of the nature of God. It's a reflection of his kindness, his goodness, of who he is. But those things alone do not assure you, or is not an assurance of, of, of if you like, of salvation. Um, and what I mean by this is doing good things is one thing, but how about if we do some stuff? The good things should always point to the one who is ultimately good and has the ultimate solution. So Abraham basically, um, he waited patiently. And the word patient there basically means to uh, go through long suffering. And he could do that because he had hope. So yeah, so this, this, this hope is more than just the, the doing the good stuff. This is actually a person. And this hope is Jesus. And he entered into the heavenly realms. And that's where we're seated and that's where our, um, our hope sits and rests and that's where we are with him. So that the dust and the stars of our lives, if you like, be the promises, the hopes, they're still there. But at this current moment, actually, when it comes down to it, could we say all that matters is Christ and Christ alone? It's just Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate hope. Um, he is, yeah, it's just, he is the anchor. 
mm. uh, for our souls. So, yeah. And I love that Jesus isn't this destination that we're just waiting for. But just like he, we saw on earth as he journeyed with people through the highs and lows and through his highs and lows when others weren't there for him, he is that consistent and steadfast hope, isn't he, through this journey? I love what you're saying about it's so practical and how everything that our hope does, all these good works need to point back to Jesus because in the end, hope, when it's really tested, it's the root and source of it is in our relationship with the one who is hope. Yeah. We're going to land it there. There's so much good stuff to chew on over the next week. Thank you so much, Sasha, for coming on the show, for sharing your heart, for being a key worker. We absolutely love you and support you and all your colleagues and everyone who's working so hard right now. And um, thank you for bringing this message of hope. It was awesome. Okay, guys, we really appreciate you joining us this week. Please stay tuned. Next week, we'll be here at the same time. Have a blessed week. <laughs>